with kids in our school. Uh, we did the Start with Hello program this year. We were attempting to end social isolationism. You know, kids had to sit with different kids at lunch. Kids were asked to do random acts of kindness. They were asked to, we had kids outside saying hello and welcoming kids, and they walked walk in the building. Um, the health classes did an anti-bullying campaign. Mrs. Mayo, when you came in and made a t-shirt, um, you know, to talk about, just to make the issue public and out there, uh, to talk about what you can do if bullying happens. Um, we had a random act of kindness week. We've had kindness change around the building where kids could recognize each other for doing something kind. Um, we partnered with St. Antoine's Nursing Home, where all of our teams do different events throughout the year, where they go over and service and work with and you know, play board games or great stories or do things with the elderly. And anything we can to build that human connection and to uh, teach kids empathy, we do. Um, we also, in seventh grade, we screen every student. Um, we, give, they give, we give them a mental health screen. And any kid who shows any levels of ISO elevations and anxiety or depression, we contact those families. We say, you know, we can do some things to help your child here, and maybe there's some things you might want to do to reach out to help your child out in the community. Um, we do take it very seriously when anything is reported. Um, we try to work very hard. One of the things I always say to a kid in my office, if we ever have something that's reported, is we don't want that snitch label. Um, I try not to do anything that they're not comfortable with um, in working through the issues. Again, you know, they're not always um, successful. But I do think, and I wouldn't mind hearing from the gentleman again, I do think we have a pretty strong culture here. I do think that this is a positive place to go. I do think that kids enjoy their experience in middle school. Again, it's not perfect. Um, you know, I wish it was perfect for everyone. Obviously, it's not. You know, we do have work to do and more things that we can be doing. Um, but I am proud of this place. I am proud of the culture that we have. I'm proud of the kids that we develop. Um, I'm proud of these kids over here. So, um, like I said, a little, a little taken aback right now. Um, you never want to hear that about any kid in the building. One is too many. incidents of examples of kids being unkind. Uh, we also get a lot of, I'm sure you know you've been through, we had a, I had a report today of you know a child that was being bullied. A kid took his backpack and put it up on the basketball hoop so he couldn't reach it. So like, all right, that's inappropriate, can't do that. Turns out that the kid whose backpack was put on the basketball hoop threw a money snowball at the kid earlier in the day. They're friends. They sit together at lunch. They're peers. So the mother's all upset. Bully didn't happen. It would, but again, both kids doing inappropriate, unkind things. Um, we've had examples of kids saying, um, saying unkind things. We've had kids who argue with one another within a peer group. Um, we've had kids who have been excluded from a peer group and things like that. But as far as stronger group of kids targeting a weaker kid, no. So, so what's some of the follow-up that we've seen to the fact that because we know Mr. Lev reporting there's been violence to the dog. You said that people were dumping things and throwing things. I don't think those were reported to me. Those weren't reported. I did not know about those. They, were, they truly were not reported. Any time there's any hands on of any kind, there's always some sort of contact with home, meeting with us, constant. Like, even if it's two kids who are friends and we were just joking around. Like, hands on is an automatic for us of any kind.
both Principal uh, and Ms. Gillette, I think, are both saying the truth. What I mean is that there is a good culture here, but every but it's almost endemic to the age, the ages of the people, the kids sometimes. There, there are instances of bullying. And my point in putting it on of this agenda was to have us recognize as a committee, as a school committee that it does happen. And a lot of times bullying takes place, we don't see it. I mean, maybe, I mean adults. A lot of the, so the people who perpetrate it have been bullied themselves. And I believe, you know, I, I believe that they're getting, the kids are going to do it. Again, they're often bullied themselves and they have ways of doing things, social media, through various other reasons, but ways, but particularly social media, that gives so many different things that can reach out that we as adults don't always see. And it's hard for us to not only to see it, let alone detect it. Now, look, look, when I was campaigning, was not a, I, I noticed this issue came up, not much, but every now and then, a very small number of times, but I noticed when it came up, it came up very you know, significant. And I think it's, again, as Mr. Gillette and Mr. Laha said, they're both saying the same, they're both saying the truth and points. We have good culture here. When there is bullying, kids who suffer, often suffer in some silence, and we as adults are not consistent. So I don't think it's, uh, I just think it's a matter of us staying on top of it. And I don't have all the answers either. It's just about a lot of us just being though aware that yeah, there's issues and that we're going to stay on it. I believe our middle school and our high school, I believe all of us are on it and are staying on it, but I just want to keep, you know, as a committee to say we just want to keep pushing on it. It's a kind of issue since we don't see it a lot, it's easy to ignore. Well, not phrase, not even not saying it's ignored, but I think that we've got it under control. And we may think most often, there's always those few kids who literally as they fall for the cracks. Uh, I work with some I work for, uh, most of these are but I think we'll talk about the summer. I work with special, some students with learning differences uh, outside of Rhode Island. And I do hear from them in the summer, and these kids tell me, I have them so much every year, they tell me they sometimes get bullied in school. We're talking very, I'll say it's a very strong district in Massachusetts. So it happens everywhere. I'm sure it happens everywhere. And I just want to say, again, I, I don't, I'm repeating myself, I don't repeat myself. My point in putting this on there is just to kind of bring it to light bring it to our attention, not like that I think everyone's aware of it, but just bring it to attention and make sure that we kind of up our game that we're doing. We're always looking for new ways to address this issue because I get it, bullying takes new forms every year. As technology increases, new forms of bullying just do take place. That's a good point. Now, our principal Lahar, principal
one of the things we can do too is we can also educate the parents a little bit more. We do have, we are the electronic age. I mean, everyone's got laptops out, everyone's got phones. It is, you know, it is different than, you know, when we were kids, if somebody was mean to somebody at school, that kid went home. And then that was it. Now, you can be reached anywhere you are at any time of day. You know, you have a device, you're on a PlayStation, you have a phone. People can send you messages, send you texts, send you anything. So there's no getting away from from any of it. And I think parents, I think, struggle with that a little bit. One of the things that we actually had a meeting on today is um, the Engaged North Smith Group is looking to write a grant for, for the Board of Health. And one of the things they want to do is do a show in the movie Screen Angels for parents that just talks about screen time and what kids are doing and how to monitor and you know, are you aware of what your kids are saying on social media? Do you know that there's one Instagram account that they're friends with you on, and then there's the one that they have that all their friends see, and all that type of stuff. Um, so I think getting them more in the loop is one thing that we can do. Um, we put the wheels in motion on that. Like Mr. Let's said, we do have you know, speakers in, and we do have them in the health class, and we do talk about it, and we do have different events. I mean, we got a bus to go around town and Christmas carol to the elderly people who, you know, we've got a list of people from Wheels for Wheels. Anything we can to foster kindness and empathy and those types of things, we'll do with the kids, but maybe it's time we start to reach out a little bit more to the adults. Um, bring them in, bring them in. It's the only idea I have right now. Um, and again, you know, off the, but we, that's what we're going to do for the fun. Um, thank, first of all, thank you very much, Mr. Schlitt, for sharing that. that to be very, very difficult, and it's heartbreaking for any parent to have to listen to it. And I think that, and to live through it, even worse. Um, I think that part of the problem is, as you said, it's the age, as you said too, it's the age. Um, kids are just trying to find themselves. And I think that, George, you said something that was very, very telling. You said that cruelty is the hallmark of adolescence. And I think that that is, unfortunately, very, very true, because bullying can be so subtle. And you just don't know oftentimes that it's happening you think that you have a wonderful culture here, and I believe that you do because I have a granddaughter here. Um, I think it's so subtle that sometimes you just don't realize that it's happening. And I think that you know, the kids are trying to find themselves. Everything you said is so true about that age group. And I'm just really sorry that you made your daughter especially. One of the very different things is these men here are able to you know, be comfortable in their own skin. They see themselves through their own eyes as the people that they are. Middle school age, kids much more see themselves in the reflection of everybody else's eyes. Uh, and they're trying to fit something for what all of you want them to be or they should be. And they're constantly judging themselves by what other people think, not by who I am and the content of their own character. It happens, but it's slow. And it's, it, it can be a bumpy road. I'm also in the health and wellness community here in West Midfield, and this is also one of our big arts, so um, maybe we can just come up with some ideas. I, I did. I, I, I don't think I need the link. I just wanted to say that I'm saddened and very sorry for what your youngest daughter and your entire family has had to endure through this. Um, personally, I want to thank you for coming forward. I think it's eye-opening to us to truly believe that we don't have problems here in our school system. We really do. And I know administration does their absolute best. I've known these gentlemen for a long, long time. Uh, and I know they do their best. And we, we all want the best for our children. But I, I really think it's important that you came forward tonight. And I, I do appreciate that you did that, as difficult as it was. My oldest son didn't have an issue. But she's affected by she's, these two. And she's in their class and had the best experience. She was our own All along. Yeah. <laughs> best experience. Her name, her name is off there. Yeah. But it had no issue. They're, they're completely opposite kids. But um, she shouldn't have to worry about her little sister this way.
I agree. I'm not, I really I know. I agree. I think they're doing everything. And I know that. But, but I also think Harry and I and I could agree more. And unfortunately, we're not in a perfect world. In right. situations do happen even here. And it's sad to hear that it happened.
Well, give me an answer. Are they suspended? Well, guess what? That's that. I'm going to say. But each situation is different. No, it's not. Once the bullying happens, the situation's the same. The one thing you've got to understand, because I've dealt with this with my son. Students or, ch or kids need a black and white answer. That's what they need. They need to know if I am responsible for this, I'm suspended. That's it. It's over. Whatever you fear on appropriate levels. You can't kids are not developed minds. They need black and white answers. If you don't give them black and white answers, they are not going to perform to their best level. It's as simple as that. That's how I dealt with my son for years. Black and white. You do this, this is a consequence. And if I, if you, I take away enough times, you're going to stop the behavior. So it shouldn't be a case-by-case -case basis. Once it's identified that that student has both. Now you may agree or disagree with that. So those are some, some of the things to think about. Look, look at your system. 